And this should go without saying, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Don't do this with the battery on. We've got the dash off, obviously. We've cut off the connectors. I traced the pad. Yes, I traced all these circuits. So for example, you know, if I take this red and white one here, I just followed this circuit around to tell me what's what. The bottom of each one of these, these are obviously bulbs in here. The bottom is the positive. So I did that. I'm gonna put some butt connectors on all of these. It's important to note that my dash, the existing one, is what they refer to as without gauges, which means I only have warning lights for specific items. Some trucks have actual gauges for all of the items. So with the 73 to 79 F100s, there are different dashes. So I had to just trace those around, which it wasn't difficult to figure out what wire goes where. Don't use my colors necessarily to match up with your vehicle because again, mine is without gauges. If you have a with gauges truck, then your wires are gonna be different color. Okay, so I've got these connectors on. No big deal, that was pretty simple. What I did is I just put them in there and crimped them and then this is obviously heat shrink as well. However, you know, if you wanted to solder them, then crimp them, that's probably the right way to do it. But don't just use wire caps on this stuff. If you use wire caps on this stuff, over a period of time, it's gonna shake loose. So, you know, just do it the right way. I'll show you what, you know, crimpers I'm using, which are legit crimpers, right? That's what you wanna use. Uh, you don't wanna use pliers or something. These crimps with the with the nice dimple there really will, will mash those down. Okay, so the next step is obviously, I've got the Intellitronics unit here. And uh, I am just going to start taking these wires and mounting them you know, connecting them with the butt connectors. I have the, you know, the wire map written down here, which I'll share in the comments below. I'm 95% all of these are right, but I'm not going to share it until I'm 100%. Don't want to send you guys down some sort of rabbit hole. Next step is I've got three wires coming from the new speedometer sensor. Red is positive for power, black is ground, and white is the actual sensor. So this white goes to the white here on the new dash. We also ran a green, and this is for dimming. This will give you the ability to dim them, and this actually goes to parking light. Uh, we've got it ran right up to the front left. There's a hole on the inside fender that you can go right in and tap onto that parking light. Something to note about the speed the the speedometer sensor wires uh, it notes in the instructions to either run a shielded line or to twist the ground and the actual sensor cable which is white so black and white twist them together a way to do that if you're not terribly familiar is take one end of the wire of both wires kind of put them together and then put them in the chuck of a drill and then just fire the drill a couple of times and it will twist them for you easy peasy. The previous owner was nice enough to run a steering wheel tack uh, back from the tachometer. So I've got that wire, I don't have to run it. If you don't have one, you're going to have to run this over to the tack under the hood. So I wanna make note of this. This is uh, essentially the programming button for the dash kit. And I've seen a lot of guys are putting them right in here like this, right? So they'll they'll actually pop a hole through the dash and bring this through. It's got a little, I'm sorry, it's got a little nut drive or a little nut here to, to hold it on. It doesn't look great, but it doesn't look awful. And it's really small. You see, you know, compared to my finger, it's very, very small. This is again, how you program it. This is how you can toggle between uh, tack or trip meter and odometer and that kind of stuff. But I've got the rest of these all connected, the butt connectors. I don't have the power in the ground connected yet, but i uh, gonna do that here right now. Now what we're going to do is we are going to look for switched power. I've got my little cheap Harbor Freight tester light. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to test 
uh, this is near the radio uh, and I see this yellow and green wire and then somebody changed it, somebody cut into it, put it as a red um, and then it's back to green and yellow. So I'm assuming that that is a positive and I'm just gonna put this in. I don't see anything when I turn my switch. Okay, so that means the dash will come on when I turn that key. That's a switched power. That is possibly the worst soldering job I've ever seen in my life. Yellow and black stripe or yellow and whatever stripe that is. That's an 18 gauge wire. And then it goes down to, that's probably 16. Uh, and then it goes into that little switch, this little switch here. I'm gonna cut that off. It's awful. Um, and I'm gonna put a butt connector on there and that's where I'm going to power my dash. And this should go without saying, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Don't do this with the battery on, right? I put that battery on to test the power. But I'm gonna take it right back off. Right? Don't do any of this stuff with the battery on, just because you know you might get a short whatever, and next thing you know, you fried a $400 instrument cluster. Okay, so I've got the, the power on there. One wire left and that's the ground. Okay, so here's the moment of truth. Blinkers work. So don't worry about any of this other stuff. Uh, volts work, good there, we can adjust that once the vehicle's running. It's not gonna show me any oil pressure or fuel. One, it, I don't even have a gas tank in this truck yet and the oil sensor is not connected. This is the bushing that comes with the, uh, the sensor when you buy the, uh, the dash kit. And then there's the sensor itself. Uh, this is a 351 Windsor. My temp sensor is right here. Here's my old one. Here's the new one that I actually had to go buy at Lowe's. These things are four bucks or something a piece. Uh, the one that they send with it will not work. It won't go into mine. So uh, keep that in mind when you're doing this. So I'm just gonna put this in. Uh, instructions say do not use any pipe dope or Teflon tape. Uh, that is against my better judgment, but I'm gonna listen to their instructions. go I got that pretty good here's my temp line this is the old one here get that out of there here's the line that we ran for temp so I'm just gonna cut some with some slack right here strip this out all my strippers are at exactly but I'll do it like that Put my shrink tube on. Put my crimp on. I'm gonna shorten this a bit. About there. Shrink it on there. Okay, so here we are under the car, under the truck, and we're putting the uh, speed sensor on. So this is the speed sensor. Goes sensor goes right in the transmission. We've we've already put our harness on, and I've just got to put the bolt in here to hold it. That's all. The sensor is so big. Okay, so here's the problem. This bolt is the sensor is so big that the bolt can't get by it. The bolt to actually clip this thing in. This is a C4 transmission. This is a green dot C4 transmission. So if any of you guys out there have a C4 transmission, you're gonna go through the same thing I'm going through with this. I got an Allen bolt to see if that will work. And it looks like we might be in business.
So these threads going into my transmission are a quarter 20. Um, I'm gonna have my, my boy come back under here before we're done and put some Loctite on here because I can't put a washer on here. It's just too tight. I'm happy with that. And the, my baby boy, he did a nice job of getting the wires over here. And so that looks pretty good to me. So I'm pretty happy with that. And that's in there solid. So to recap, the bolt that I took out of the speed sensor would no longer fit with this new sensor. So I had to uh, go get an Allen wrench. I tried a couple of different bolts, but the heads were still too big. So that Allen bolt will fit in there. And because it's a short screw, it's not uh, too bad of a deal putting that in. So I'm happy with that and moving on to the next one. Okay, so we've got all the wires connected. Uh, we've got the power for the uh, dash here, as well as the power for the speedo sensor is right in here. Everything else is hooked up. It's connected when you hook, when you connect this, what you wanna do, here's obviously the printed circuit board. Here is the glass. You want to get everything calibrated. There is a screw right here where you can adjust the voltage from the alternator. And then there are dip switches down here on the other side of the glass. Once you put that glass on, you can't do it. So you're gonna to have to take those back off, which would be a problem. So you wanna get all that stuff done first. And then when you turn the key, that's what you've got. So we've got almost a full tank of gas. We don't have the oil pressure uh, connected yet just because uh, we needed to order a part. This is the oil pressure sensor. As you can tell, it's pretty big. It is, right? It's a pretty big sensor. The engine in this truck, again, 73 to 79 F100. The engine in this truck is a 351 Windsor. If you know anything about 351 Windsors, the oil pressure sensor is just to the left of the oil filter. This will not fit. Uh, so what you need to do is you need to get an extension and they make these, these hex rod extensions that will then put this, it's about four and a half inches long, comes off of the block and then this goes in at a 45 degree angle. And then it's just uh, your ground and your signal wire. And that's it. This wiring that I will su supply down in the description is for a vehicle that started out without gauges. And if you do that, 100% uh, these colors that I've given you in the description of the video will work for you and make this process a whole lot easier on you. Okay, so a couple of last things to note. On these dip switches, for your vehicles, obviously my this is a Ford 79 F100. So you would assume that, you know, you're going to go into these up positions. Actually, uh, I ended up having to use the VDO. This is an aftermarket fuel system. So I ended up using this VDO and that's what got me where I needed to be. Long story short, before you start this project, know how much gas is in your vehicle. We were in a, a different circumstance because we actually had to change the fuel tank as well. So when we started, it was at zeros. This gauge goes from zero to 99. So if you're at zeros, you don't have any fuel in your tank, you're going to have uh, you, you need to know approximately how much fuel you have in your tank so that that number will match up. Obviously, if you've got about a half a tank, it should be at about 50. Uh, but if you're full and it's at 99, in a number of different situations with those dip switches, it would say 99 and alternatively zero. So 
uh, best bet is to have a half a tank or three quarters of a tank of gas. And then that way, you know uh, that, okay, it's actually reading and it's not just showing me zeros or 99s. Hopefully I explained that well enough. The other thing that you have to keep in mind is, again, this is a without gauges truck. So here and here on our uh, cluster, there were just lights. Well, it won't work. So we actually had to send away for a new one because we could not take those out. Uh, we tried to cut them out with a Dremel yesterday and I just didn't like the way that it turned out. The part is $60 at LMC truck. So we just sent away for that and a new glass. And then that way these lights will shine through properly uh, and you've got a, a good finished product. Pretty simple. Good luck.